service announcements, uh, town administrators, uh, and then we move on to a town administrator's update uh, and action items, uh, including uh, reopening the special town meeting warrant, uh, consideration of possible action on the renewal of the town's contract with Veolia, uh, consideration and possible action to approve the reappointment of Mary Dowling to the special events committee, uh, uh, consideration of possible action on the reappointment of Mara O'Connor to the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Committee, uh, consideration possible uh, reappointment of Wally Hersey to the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Committee, uh, consideration of possible action to approve the reappointment of Margaret Dar Darling to the Municipal Housing Trust Committee, uh, consideration of possible action to confirm the appointment of Sandra Nasto to the Special Events Committee, uh, consideration on possible action to accept the letter of resignation of Stephen Laietto uh, from the Surge Police Department, uh, consideration of possible action uh, to accept the donation of Mar Marie Del Dorian uh, of Sturbridge to the Sturbridge Fire Department. Then we will move on to old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizen forum, and then we will adjourn. So with that, um, I would like to everybody to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I walk by my dog. All right. Well, I'd also just like to take a. Uh... Um, a moment of silence uh, at the beginning of this new year for just uh, uh, all the strife abroad that hopefully will resolve. Okay, um, and with that, uh, public service announcements. Mary Lou. Just Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, Chase? Just a Happy New Year. Thank you. Mary? Saying happy, healthy new year, God's blessings. If anybody is thinking about resolutions and you want to get more involved with the town, we have openings. Special Events Committee has an opening. We plan events for the town of Sturbridge. We have a very small budget, but we have something. And um, if you have any ideas that you would like to share, please come to one of our meetings or consider joining. It's not an overly cumbersome time commitment. We meet about once a month, once every two months. And that's it. Okay, likewise, Happy New Year and Healthy New Year. Great, and I will uh, echo that. All right, moving to the town administrator's update, Robin. Yeah, very quickly. Uh, this was not on my memo, but uh, our most recent update indicates the library should be reopening around February 1st. They'll start moving back in partially with the partial service, hopefully January 16th or 17th, um, but then likely by February 1st, we're hoping it will be operational. So I apologize to everybody for the delay and the, the time it's taken, but uh, we, we will get there. Uh, just the memo, very briefly, the uh, Alvin Yard from the Cable Advisory Committee, the chair of the committee, uh, came to me, gave me a brief update on some of the things they're doing. He'd like to just give a very broad umbrella overview at the next meeting of where they're at for the cable contract. We still have time, it's 2025 that it expires, but that um, comes very quickly. So um, we're just gonna ask to put him on for about five minutes at the next meeting, so he can just give you all an update of, of the direction and the things that they're looking at. Uh, the warrant is prepared. Um, I believe it's here for some sign for signing. Substantively, the final version, we had some just Scrivener's errors and whatnot that needed to be corrected and cleaned up. Um, and we have a FinCon meeting January 4th. There is a virtual link. If you want to attend, just let me know. I'll make sure you get the virtual link. But we are meeting with FinCom on January 4th. Um, Senior Center, last month I met with the OPM. Uh, we are informed that in its obviously very early phases, we are on schedule and on, on price. So on budget, on schedule, we like, we like that. And uh, we did hit, there was a lot, there was rumor out there that we hit ledge and the project was, you know, like all over and done and we're never gonna have a senior center. Uh, we hit rocks, it's New England, it's the sort of the foothills of the Berkshires. Uh, we are likely to hit a lot of rocks. We were grateful not to hit ledge because we know it's all around us, but we did not. So contrary to the rumor mill, um, we did not hit ledge. So the project is still moving forward. Um, 
um, licenses. Most all licenses have been retrieved or released. There were still some outstanding issues, a couple that had been held. Um, if it's a liquor license, the police are notified that the license is held so that the operation can't serve. I believe we only have one liquor license held. Or two? Two. two. Well, three technically, but one's not open. Well, one's not open. No. Yeah. So two for operating businesses. Uh, we're working with them to try to get that all rectified. Uh, generally, as we all talked about last time the process worked, we found hiccups, but we also found things that we had missed. And so we'll fix those hiccups and move forward and um, hopefully all will go well on that. Um, you have a memo from me, uh, Mary Blanchard, you, uh, you had asked her for an update on the free cash numbers, which we were due to give to you at this point. Barbara gave you a pretty lengthy uh, analysis and then I put a cover memo with that. Um, it's something I think we can discuss down the road, but I just yeah, wanted to at least to. give you a memo as we got closer to budget season. Uh, we can talk about it more just to give you a sense, give you some, I know there's a lot of debate on the numbers, how much we should have, what the DOR recommends versus what Moody's really wants. Um, and I just thought that's an important, uh, GFOA standards versus DOR. I just thought it was important for you to have a little bit of perspective on that. As you read that and digest that over the next several weeks, if you have questions on that, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, but I just wanted you. to give you a broad view on that, so thank you. Anything else, Rob? Happy New Year to everybody. All right. Um, looking forward to 24. Started off with a bang. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, can, sure. I, can I yeah, give that's... one more public service announcement? Of course, Mr. yeah. Mr. Rochair, this may embarrass our town administrator a little, but I want to congratulate her. <laughs> Every January 1st, she does a plunge to benefit Special Olympics, correct? Yes. And she gets in freezing cold water, and it's really admirable. I don't know how cold the water was this year. Not but bad this year, low 40s for water temperature. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. But it was, uh, thank you. It's, yes, uh, that was very impressive. It's a great cause, um, and the Olympians, the Special Olympians actually volunteer and help run the event. So when you start to feel really cold and question why the heck you are doing that, um, you look at them, yes. and let me tell you, you know, the grit that they show, the determination, it's nothing. It, you know, what we do is nothing compared to what Special Olympians do every day and deal with, so. But thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm really proud of it. We've raised, um, in the years I've been doing it, I think I've raised, through the generosity of wonderful people, um, about $70,000 for Special yeah. Olympics, so. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's exciting. It's impressive. It's, and it's exhilarating. And if anybody wants a natural high, like, just jump in the ocean. It's a I'll take a high on that. <laughs> Take the fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? Thank you. Uh, all right, that's great. Thanks, Robin. Um, anything else for Robin from the board? No? Okay. So we are moving on to action items. I, we are now moving to A, consideration of possible action on signing a special town meeting warrant. To do that, we would need to open it. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to open the special town meeting warrant. Second. We didn't already do this? Yeah, I think this is just to get it signed. Just to get it signed. Yeah. Oh. Yes. I thought there was a typo. Some typo. No, those script, well, you, you could open to accept Scrivener's errors and changes, but I didn't even, I mean, those don't even really have to be. Yeah. Well, if you want to do that just for, as a formality, probably. Um, yeah, I mean. The, Might as well if you've opened it. Can't hurt to open it, <laughs> yeah. close it right back up, and then have so, it signed. So, yeah. All right. It was here for signing more than anything. Well, so there's no, is this the same version as the one? Yeah, the nothing previous? substantive. Okay. Nothing substantive. All right. Just Barbara cut some technical orders that I put things in. And things like okay. That. Um, does it, do we have a motion to accept the updated? So moved. I go a second. Second. All those in favor? All right, the ayes have them, so. Okay, so we can sign. And while you sign, if I may have a moment. It's right here, right? Yes. And I just wanted to make a public announcement also that nomination packets will be ready next week for pickup in the town clerk's office. Of course, that's coming up rather quickly for our annual town meeting, which is April 8th. And the deadline um, for that is February 17th, approximately, to return those packets back, the nomination papers. So I'll have more out on our website. I think you said a uh, special town meeting and not election. Sorry, election. Yeah. And then also, um, I would like to ask the Board of Selectmen for consideration of changing the late night to Monday, back to Monday nights. Back when I first started as town clerk, um, I had proposed Monday nights, and we had opened up 
on a Monday nights till seven. And the reason I did that was because when the Board of Selectmen meet, you do a lot of appointments and also the um, hiring of certain you know, individuals. And with that being said, we can have our town offices open. Those appointments can then be brought right downstairs to be sworn in. They can also go over to the finance department, get their paperwork and packets done. And I just think it just makes a little bit more sense to have those offices open on Monday nights while you meet. You know, granted, there are, meet and there are holidays, but again, you would meet on a Tuesday night. We would then have our late night on a Tuesday night. I just think it makes more sense. I did speak with some of the departments, and they were all on board with that also. I will tell you, because we haven't talked about this, actually, and I'm glad you're bringing it up. One of the, We talked about it in passing at, at earlier points, but one of the other things is it actually does work well because when we have um, a Monday holiday and we just stay open on a Tuesday late, it, doesn't, it won't impact the late hours. People will still be working the right amount of hours, the same amount of hours, but also a lot of department heads have to come to Monday night meetings to either update you guys or a night like tonight with Heather or um, Jean Bouban or whatever. That just adds another night if they happen to have a Wednesday or Thursday night meeting on top of Tuesday. So then they hear Monday night, Tuesday late till seven, and then a Wednesday or Thursday meeting, like conservation mm -hmm. I think meets Wednesdays Thursdays. or Thursdays. Thursdays. So then you have like Becky, for example, would have a Monday night, a Tuesday night, and a Thursday night. I have no issue with swapping it out. Um, it just means our Monday holidays, because it's Tuesday, it doesn't become a payroll issue. We just make sure we stay open late on Tuesday night so the public doesn't lose that access either. All right, questions, comments from the board? I just have one comment. I think that makes a lot of sense, so I would totally be on board. I think one of the reasons we changed, and as long as this could be you know, correct, is that when department heads do have to come talk with us, one of the reasons we wanted to stay open is if the public needed to meet with those people, and if they're meeting with us, it kind of defeats the purpose. So as long as there's somebody else in that office that can meet with that person, for example, like if the town planner, Jean's right. here, giving her hour update on the night we're supposed to be open for planning board, as long as the admin, somebody's in there, because otherwise, you know, that's it, a good point. It kind um, of to be, and I think that's why we had switched. Yeah. But if somebody else were in the office when that department's giving their update, mm -hmm. then that would make total sense. I think now with Crystal over there mm -hmm. for the across the street departments, the new admin position there, that would alleviate that because you'd either have Janae, for example, or Crystal. Right. Crystal, you know, if if Janae was out for some reason, but absolutely, we could always just ensure that mm -hmm. they're staffing. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, I'm all for it. I think it's more in line with what's going on, staying late in the meetings and whatnot, so. I have no problem. So we, I mean, I don't think any action, the, the hours and buildings are basically up to you guys and me, so we can make that change effective immediately if you want. As it works out, Tuesdays this month, our meetings are on Tuesdays anyway, but so we could start. Should we start, time? maybe let's start next February month so 1st. people have a heads up. Right, yeah. February 1st would make sense to yeah. start that. Some advertisement. The week Thank of you. Perfect. Thank you. Yep, I think so. No, thank Happy you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All, all right, we're moving on to B, which is consideration and possible action on the possible renewal of the town's contract with Veolia. So with Veolia, we have to give a 180-day notice if we were going to break the contract. We're supposed to give them a 180-day <coughs> notice of desire to renew or not. We are actually slightly within that 180 days, though it's not earth-shattering. Um, if the board wants to take action tonight, they can. If they want to take another two weeks, we could take another two weeks. I put this in front of you. My recommendation is to renew um, for a few reasons. First of all, obviously go out to bid. You're going to come back with higher numbers than what we already have locked into with a contract. Um, B and Heather certainly can talk to this more. There are not companies out there or many companies out there that do both water and sewer, and Veolia bought up the biggest competitor um, that would have been able to bid it a, a little while back. Um, the reality of doing it in-house when you run, run your own sewage treatment plant is um, really unwieldy. You, you can do it. I've done water in-house, um, and that's bad enough because you're at the whims of staffing, and it's licensing for water and whatnot is complicated, and um, 
there are not that many people licensed particularly to do water. With the incoming regulations, what we're dealing with with PFAS, what we're going to be dealing with with sewer PFAS out of leachate in a landfill, I would be concerned about putting that either under Heather for her own sake time-wise or creating a water sewer division and trying to staff it. So my recommendation at this point is to be to stick with what we have extended out per the terms of that contract um, and, and go from there. Heather is here if you have questions. Um, if you want to think about it for another two weeks, I think Violia certainly would accept another two weeks of uh, time for us to think about it, but we are within the window. Questions, thoughts from the board? Um, Heather, have you gone through the contract to see if you want to change anything or update um, things? We, we, there was a provision that we were looking at potentially changing, and it had to be did the CPIU and how we adjusted it. But when we started to really look into it, and with what our new scheduling of our budget is going to be, there really isn't any good time to set. We'd be setting it almost a year ahead just to know what we were doing in the budget. So the way that we're doing it, it does work. Estimating on the budget side of what the CPIU is going to be, which is really what the biggest change in the contract is. There are some language issues in the contract, but basically, ever since I've been here, and I know a few of my predecessors, they haven't. I'm not going to worry about this because language in there that probably should have been tweaked back on this. I think it makes sense in go ahead and continue with the contract as it is, not worry about the little ambiguities of some of the language at this time, and let the contract, where you can extend it for the next period, allow it to be extended. I will say if you had to go out to bid, and I had done, we went out to bid, I was there at Southbridge when we had to go back out to bid for the sewer contract. It, you all are also hiring an outside consultant to help put it together because it is a very technical document and all the information that you have to provide to the bidders is very encumbering. Um, you know, it's how much usage they have. It's years and years of back and forth so that they, they can look through and it's a very long process because they have to estimate how much chemical usage is going to be there. They have to look at all the testing requirements. They have to look at all the staffing requirements. The document that we put together for Southbridge was huge, and we ended up getting one better, one better anyways. So there was, the, and we had to, we were, by, by law, we had to. So it wasn't an option. We had already got to the end of the contracts. We, we couldn't extend it anymore. This one, we used to love the provision to extend it. We had to do it. It was, I want to say, and this was, three or four years ago, it was $30,000 to put that package together. So that's a cost that you would have to put together right now, and we'd have to start right now, put it together for even in 180 days. And I just don't think, if I thought you were going to get a deal or a better process out of it, or you know something better out of there, I would recommend it. But at this time, I don't think it's a cost that we want to incur where we are. And I don't think that we want to take the risk of them actually make, coming back with a higher price. Because some of the things that you see, um, the cost of chemicals have outpaced the cost of the CPIU. Even though chemicals are included, they've actually been out, their costs have gone up a lot. If you look at what happens to some of the chemical companies, having fires down in Texas and everything, that drove the cost of chemicals up a big thing. And when, if it's a 10% increase in chemicals and the amount of chemicals they use, that really feeds into their profit. So they will adjust their rates. The other thing that Robin did talk about was the problems that you have in staffing. And if I don't, I, you know, I follow some of the local plants around here just because it's my business. But we are had almost every single one of their operators leave. They were in a panic. They couldn't find staffing. They still haven't figured out what they're doing with their staffing. So, it's, it's very easy to say that we were going to, you know, take, you know, we should look at taking it over ourselves, but it's professional staffing levels that you really have to be concerned with, and that licensure process is. There are more operators retiring than operators coming in. So there is a staffing shortage all over the place for operators. So we have to 
consider that when we're considering what we want to do for contract operations. Plus, with contract operations, you get the benefits of professional staff to look at issues. When we were having issues with our CBOD this winter, over the summer, their staffing, not localized, their professional staffing that looks at operational issues came in, took samples, gave guidance, do this, run these tests, let's look at this, run this option, could it be this? That is what you get the benefit of having a big company, where if you had local operators, it's your one local operator that would have to try to figure out what was going on. Now, granted, they're a community, they do call on each other and help each other out, but there is a benefit to having that ability to have that broad sense of knowledge, um, especially you know, in this day and age when it's, our limits are so much tighter than they used to be in the past. And I will say from being in different places and what I've seen, you are getting good service here. The employees here really care and they want to operate, and they want to do what's best for the town. They treat it like it's their plant and it's their town. Um, so they really are trying to do what's best, and they are very knowledgeable mm -hmm. at both water and so. Okay, uh, questions, comments for Heather or Robert? I just have a question. It makes sense to me <clears throat> to renew their contract, but in the past, I don't think we've hired consultants um, have we, Mary? Not, not for renewing, but renewing. for writing the, the specification. Oh, we, which would have been what, 15, 15 years, years ago? ago. Oh, it would have been the original. I guess I wasn't here. So time. was it? It was a uh, five year with two Thank five you. year renewals. So what happened was they wrote that original bid for a five year with two five year renewals. We are at the second of those five years. So back ten years ago before we yeah so five and five back ten years ago they would have had to have written bid specs. So we, I think I was on the board 10 years ago, so we did. We uh, I would imagine you would have. I, I would imagine you probably hired Ty and Bond at the time you did it, and you might not even realize because they were doing everything for your wastewater treatment plant at uh, that same time. Oh, was at the same time? Maybe that's why. So, so uh, I'm sorry. I'm done. Do. So we're not legally obligated to put it out to bid because I remember those no, questions it, five it's years written ago. No, two five-year extensions. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. we don't have to. We will have to. In five years, we will, in, in five years, we will five have years. to. Yeah. yeah, four years from now, we'll be, have, we'll be already starting. Because and we're we'll going to have to. And everything else, yeah. Yeah, we'll have it in a budget. Any, any other comments? Heather, do you see any downside or anything you would like them to improve on? From my standpoint, they're always very responsive. Um, you know, I know. We're all very concerned about budget costs, but a lot of those costs are not within their control. So, you know, the only other thing that I think, and this is not on a local, and they, they definitely are working on this, is how quickly they get their bills turned back over to us for our reimbursable costs. Um, but in general, I think in working with this company in both places, um, they're better here than they were in Southbridge, much better. Um, so I don't, I don't really have any issues with. Yeah. No, but I it, through the years, there's been a lot of problems with the plant, and um, I don't know whether it goes to maintenance or what. Well, I think that you mean the wastewater plant. Yes. So I think your wastewater plant was cutting edge at the time it was installed, and but it wasn't a proven technology mm -hmm. at the time it was installed. And so really nobody understood what the maintenance issues were going to be. And a lot of the maintenance issues you have are related to the way that that plant was designed. And I'm not, and it's not, it's not a drawback, it's nothing against the operations, but when paint fails after 10 years, there's, it's not because of the way the operators operated it, it's because of the way that it was built and designed. I, I would and I don't, suggest that, and I, because I oh yeah. was able to learn about that and some of the things behind it when I took a tour. If you have not toured the water and wastewater plants, it's sort of a good time to bring this up. I would just recommend that you set up a time with Heather and Shane. Yes, I'd, I'd love uh, they to took me when I first came here, and it was very educational to see all of the facilities, 
particularly the water, um, it, it, even more in some ways than the sewer, because we talk a lot about the sewer plant because it's a little more above the radar. But I do think across the board, um, it would be wise if, if all of you could just take a you know a half hour, an hour out of your day and take a tour. With, with Shane and, uh, and and I think it would be wise just because we definitely have some very big budget decisions that we are, are going to have for major budget decisions coming up separate from this water. issue yeah right <laughs> so it would be really helpful for you guys just to have your eyes on it um, you know even if it was just informal we walk around and kind of show you where we see issues and what we're doing and what the problem is and you know your water system although it's you know kind of been under the radar it's not going to be under the radar for no. very much longer because there's some really big costs that are coming up for that for that system so and it's just because of years it's you know everything's reaching its useful life you know it's a 50 year old water tank it's a 50 year old you know filtration system those that's where you start to you know have to start spending some money there to upgrade if you do have the time, it's definitely, it was so insightful for me when I got here just to, to see it all and understand where some of these costs are going to be coming from when we start looking at the budget, when we start talking about fund balances and water sewer and why they're, this is a little off topic from the contract, but it's important to keep that all in mind as we move forward because they can only work with the equipment we have and provide and the technology we have, so. So, Let's have this. Oh, go ahead, speaking of tanks, do you offhand know how old the tank on Fisk Hill is I don't offhand know, but I know it was painted more maintenance has been done on it more recently. It's one of our recent but I don't know offhand. The one that we're most concerned about right now is the one that's actually at OSV. Yeah. That one is showing problems with the concrete lining in the concrete mm -hmm. of the tank. So we're very concerned with that. It's likely going to be a next major tank. project, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's a major. And again, that's something if I hadn't seen with my own eyes, you could describe it, but until you see it, it you need to, if you can, it's important. Of course, I was looking at this um, first amendment to the agreement when uh, Ted Kozak was here, the um, The complete system flow monitoring study. Yep, and that's GIS the I and I that we've been doing over the last ten years. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's actually mandated by Mass DP, but true. So and our NIPTES permit that we have to do that. Yeah. And and that's one of the things you know we found some issues. Obviously, Route 20. That's one of the reasons we've been doing some investments on Route 20 this year with our lining project, which is in design, and we had to do the emergency one. So, you know, it does pay off, um, and we are flow limited. Obviously, we know coming from the Route 20 pump station, it's the pumps are no, the pumps aren't undersized. I should. The pipe is undersized for high flow rates, which is one of the reasons why we have to go to special town meeting for additional funding. So we do have um, I and I issues in town. The majority of them aren't in just our piping system. We have a lot of sump pumps that are connected directly into our sewer systems that we probably are going to have to address in future because DP and NIPTES will require us to, which we don't have an active program right now, but we do know and we do see those flows, the nature of the flows. We do know we probably have I and I problems. We've tried to do some patching and we have different programs that are going on, right? It's not just sump pumps, but the nature of the flow rates when it rains is directly related to how what we're getting in for clean water from sump pumps, too. So I and I system improvements are always going to be ongoing one of those things that we're going to have to just you know that's the pipes originally weren't really built watertight like a water system is uh, you say that's kind of crazy but it, it is true um, they're gravity pipes so the most of the time they don't have to worry about that but it's a historical problem that you see everywhere we're probably a lot better off here actually than a lot of our neighbors, if you followed any of that. I mean, I know in the last storm, both Charlton and Southbridge had considerable problems at their plant where we were able to treat every drop of water and didn't have any overflow problems at, at all. Yes, we had to pump, we had to truck the water in. That was so that we didn't have any problems. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. All right, so anything else from the board? Um, do, what is everybody's opinion on about whether or not to take a vote? Uh, it's now, to table it for two weeks, what, what do you think? I think we should take it now. I'm, I'm comfortable with my decision now. Mary? Yeah. I'm um, as well, with Violi, Violi yeah. yes. Mary? Yeah, there's, I can't see anything changing that would. No, it probably will just cost us more money. Um, okay, so do I have a motion? Okay, I'll make a motion to renew our town contract with Veolia. I'll second that. Great. All those in favor? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Rest up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, action item C, consideration and possible action to approve the reappointment of Mary Dowling to the Special Events Committee for a term to expire December 28th, 2026. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. About <laughs> if any, no, it's a fun committee. If anybody else wants it, I. No, I did it once. Okay. No, I, I like being it. So. so I'll make a motion to approve the reappointment of Mary Dowling to the special events committee for a term to expire December 28th, 2026. Second it. All right. All those in favor? There it is. Oh, thank you. All right, moving to action item D, consideration and possible action to approve the reappointment of Maura O'Connor to the Municipal Ho Affordable Housing Trust Committee for a term to expire on December 19th, 2025. Questions, comments? Do I have a motion? So moved. All right, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Those are only two-year appointments to the housing. Yeah, I think they were staggered. Some were two, some were three, oh, okay. so right. just so that they wouldn't all flip at the same time. Okay. And I think she was actually a one-year. The initial, yeah, she was one of the short the ones. Yeah. 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 Great. All right. Moving on to uh, action item E. <clears throat> consideration and possible action to approve the reappointment of Ollie Hersey to the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Committee for a term to expire on December 19, 2025. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? The ayes have it. Okay, um, again, moving on to action item F, consideration and possible action to approve the reappointment of Margaret Darling to the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Committee for a term to expire on December 19th, 2025. I have a motion? So moved. I have second? Second. All those in favor? Also, uh, just on the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Committee, uh, by way of an update, so we're going to, um, it was a Monday, the, it's Community Preservation, Robin? It goes to CPC on Monday. Yeah, for, for, the, for funding and um, uh, basically we're just reviewing the, the, the larger plan with them and see if they have any questions, concerns, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, establish the initial trust amount and begin to uh, roll out of uh, series of initiatives to make housing a little bit more affordable. So that's about it, right? Yep, and staffing for part-time. Oh, and staffing, yeah. So was it 15 hours? I think it's 15 hours, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're having a, a housing specialist for 15 hours of staffing as part of the other, yeah. Uh, but yeah, part of the request, I think, that's on Monday. Um, so yeah, and Jean's been doing a great job. Jean yes. and Jay have been doing a great job on it, per the usual, right? Absolutely. All right, moving on to uh, action item G, consideration and possible action to confirm the appointment of Sandra Nasto to the Special Events Committee for a term to expire January 2nd, 2027. So Ms. Nasto sent me an email. She saw the ad for the SEC. She said she has time and would like to be more involved in the town and looks forward to activities where people can gather and find things to do together as a community. So she seemed eager to be part of it. She's done a great job on it, <clears throat> and she was also instrumental for many years on the farmers market volunteer oh, Ms. committee Nasto? before the recreation committee took it off. Yes, yeah. very involved, and she's been on the special events with me. <clears throat> great. All right, then. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? The ayes have it. All right. Uh, consideration and possible action to accept a letter of resignation from Stephen. Uh, Layetau, uh, from the Service Police Department, effective December 20th, 2023. Um, do we 
have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? And thank him for, we thank Officer Leato for his service. It sounds like it's very logical why he's moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, but yes. No, we, we appreciate Sometimes that. life does that. Yeah. Um, all right. Moving on to action item I, consideration and possible action to accept a donation from Marie Dildurian of Sturbridge to the Sturbridge Fire Department in the amount of $300. So moved. <laughs> Do we have a second? <laughs> second. All right. All those in favor? And thank you to her for her generosity. We very much appreciate it. Robin, could you please just send her in? Absolutely. Um, all right. Moving to old business. Um, Mary Blanchard, any old business? Um, just how did we make out with that fence issue on Arnold? Oh, but the, the space. The lady did. Oh, uh, Nelson has gone out. And I believe he talked to the owner of the property and was sending him a letter. It is, we, we believe it is into our right of way a bit. And if it is, it does have to be brought back. Um, but I think Nelson is trying to do it um, in, at a discussion level at this point to see if there can be some compromise on that. But it is in progress. And an update on Beaudry, um, DPW did go out and patch the access to Mr. Silvestri. Thank you. Great. Um, anything else, Mary? Nope, that's it. Uh, Mary Dowling at Old Business? No. Chase? I have no. Nothing, thank you. Okay. If I could, just, just one sure. thing. Um, I had given you all just an update on the goals that you had set for me and where everything was at. I do, just for budgeting purposes, we do need to let Barbara know because you all collectively have to determine um, my increase beyond just the regular non-union like I have to do for the department heads for the merit um, you all collectively have to do that so um, it's not a rush rush Barbara basically will put placeholder numbers in but um, just as a formality it, it does have to be addressed so I can resubmit to you that goals list if you want another copy of it where we're at on those goals I think I listed the goals you had given me and the, those that I had set for myself and then I think I gave you an accounting of where we were on what and why certain things had or had not been done yeah I'd like another one I know I have the one but yep, I'll yeah, give you an update no, yep, I it makes it front of mind too, Matt, too sure. I, I've, <laughs> I have forgotten what we agreed to with, with respect to when we're going to give Rob and her review I it's, think I think we were going to summer. if I recall correctly we pushed forward the increase in the summertime because you hadn't had a year with the the events and then we were going to revisit basically at the beginning of this year more or less my yeah yeah okay. So because that first year had a weird, the contract had only right. a max of 2% just because it was an incoming year. Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, I think we met last January instead of October. We pushed it into January. You set the goals, and now we're actually at a full year of those goals. Yeah. So, so we should, I think I sent you an update in October. I can give you that update again because now we're officially at about a year from the time. Yeah, why, why don't we get, get that fresh, and then maybe at the next meeting we can kind of figure out a process. Would that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. So then everybody can Thank look at you. it and think about mm -hmm. it. Um, great. Thanks, Robin. Thank um, you. Anything else on that? Nope. Okay. I, uh, all right. I think we're on to new business. Mary Lou. Um, I'm concerned about things that have been posted on social media about the accountant yes the finance department yes i feel that there's a lot of misinformation that's been submitted <laughs> on everything. And, i mean i stay away from that page mm -hmm. but i had gotten an email and i said i would look into it yes and i understand did you have a discussion with barbara today i did and i posted on facebook as well on my page instead well, of responding well so let's just for yes. the, the people in uh, at home <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. So very briefly, the, we have online bill pay as an option. You can pay through escrow, you can pay through mail, you can come into town hall, you can hand a hunk of tech cash to town hall, whatever you want to do. And we also offer online through a company called Unibank. We send all the bills to Unibank because we never know who wants to pay online or who doesn't. Unibank uploads the bills. Anybody can go on and look to see who owes what for taxes. That's public record. If you want to pay online, you then go into a secure area and you pay online. The problem and what we're trying to figure out if we can rectify is payments that come in through other methods are logged into Munis, but Munis does not interface with Unibank, so we can't update the Unibank. So a gentleman went to, in fact, I spoke with him for about an hour today um, in my office, 
he went, somebody said, called him and said, you owe taxes and you're accruing interest or whatever else. Because Unibank just, it automatically just accrues. It doesn't know who's paid or who's not. He was upset because he felt that it was like an official Sturbridge thing saying he owed his taxes and he did not. And he does not. He had paid them. I explained to him that, and Barbara immediately last week when she, when he brought it to her attention and was upset, she immediately put a disclaimer on that page saying, this does not reflect taxes paid in any other format. So now people are aware. It, it, it just had not, frankly, hadn't dawned on anybody in all the years we'd had online that somebody might look at that as an official record of all taxes paid, because it's not. The official would come from our office. So she put a disclaimer up that said, this is not an official record. This does not reflect payments made other ways. This only reflects online payments. In the meantime, she pulled the whole online system down because until we can figure it out, we're due to put up new bills in March anyway. Um, so she is now in the process of trying to work with Unibank and Munis to see if there can be some interface and if our Munis things can update in there. If not, can we individually remove a person who does not want his name listed there? We can try to do that. Um, the other option is if we can't make it work, I asked the gentleman what he wanted, and he said, well, maybe we consider eliminating online payment options. I said, that's a board policy. If we can't make it work, we'll take the next step, and we take that to the board. I did talk to, um, I had a, a woman actually message me on Facebook that worked in East Providence, Rhode Island. She's from Sturbridge, and she was talking about uh, Invoice Cloud, which is something I had worked with in Cranston. I talked to my Cranston, old Cranston treasurer today. Their platform, admins, is our munis, basically. Their admins can interface with Invoice Cloud. For whatever reason, we have not been able to get munis to interface. So I understand when the gentleman was upset because if somebody looked up, if you want to troll your neighbor's taxes, yeah. um, you could say you think no, your neighbor hasn't paid. So I explained to him. No, no, I do, but I think it, I, I get now it. that I understand what's going on, I think, I don't know what's on Facebook, so I don't know how nasty. A lot of things are on Facebook. Okay, <laughs> but I, I think this gentleman's concern is legitimate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we have to find a, why, why can't we just post everybody that's paid, whether it's online or through other means, and then, it corrects anybody looking and thinking somebody's well, not paying their taxes. It's a separate, so when they, go on, when they go on to Unibank to look, they're looking at the Unibank system because all the bills go to Unibank. If you want to know if somebody's paid their taxes, you can get access to that. That's public record through downstairs. You could call right, and say, I know, oh, but that. why don't we just I mean, we could put it. a site up for that, too. So well, you, well, you know, you could have, you know, she put a the disclaimer, only access, this is only yeah. for those who paid online, not for others who paid by other right. means, and then we can just have a link to uh, everything to a list of those who paid by other means. Yeah, if we could post that dot data. And everybody's. Right, so if somebody looked up this gentleman, thorough. they could go then and say, okay, well, he, maybe he didn't pay online, and they can click Correct. and see that that's he what paid. I'm trying to say. I mean, just that, have both. that might be one option to, to resolve it. If we can make Munis talk to Unibank, if the two systems can talk, that would resolve the problem as well. Well, they, they both, well, here's the thing, and let's, I don't want to get too bogged down on this because it, it's, it, the, it doesn't sound like we have the necessarily the technical handoffs in place on what the best point is, so we're kind of going to spin our wheels over it. But fundamentally, <laughs> You, we should have a point of reconciliation, be it weekly, monthly, whatever it is, and whatever system we have can split out to Excel, QuickBooks, or anything else, or something else, to be reconciled. And if the, the, our system don't talk to it, they should not be writing people owe money when they don't owe people money. And I know that they could just, it's very fixable. And it doesn't have to be like that day. We don't need like, no. but you can say, we have updated this as of this people payments made upon this day. There's no reason. I think, well, the challenge is that we can't update Unibank directly. So we have to send them a file. No, and what it, Barbara's there. trying to do is get that file. No, no, it's better if it's automatic. But yeah. if it's not automatic, it's not automatic. And yeah. So we're going to have to have somebody in Unibank literally go through because we don't have access to the back door of Unibank. And that's where the challenge is. No, I get it. So, I, 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 but they're the vendor, and they got to yeah, have right, accurate agree. information. And I think I'll just put myself on the line right now because I think is there some kind of delay with respect to when Unibank knows something's paid? And for example, like our water. Hour, yeah, I think there's a 48-hour. Um, well, for example, like the last water bill, mm -hmm. I paid online, and then four or five days later, I still got a bill saying, you know, you're late and a $10 fine. 
and then I just, you know, told Barb, I showed her, she, and it ha the payment had already gone through. Yeah. So she said, yes, there's some kind of a, now I knew enough that I had already paid it. Yeah. But I thought about people who didn't, yep. who think, oh, I paid it too late, and then they went, go and pay the $10 right. fine. Right. So like, I think it should be instantaneous. Like when Sturbridge is paid online, Unibank should know, and we should know, so another bill yeah, but, doesn't But come that's out. going to require man hours unless it's, it, it automates through the system. So either you're going to have to have a step where it occurs, a reconciliation occurs all the time, because unless they're going to do update the data right. on a per day basis, effectively, or two, every two days, which I don't know how much intensive that are, it would or would not be, but when you're doing things manually, you usually screw them up. Right. Or like you're invited. Yeah. But error. like right now, people, like just people. people get bills even though they don't owe. Like and I get a bill even though I was already paid. And we even have some people who don't pay online, but actually use that Unibank system to send them a notification to remind them that it's time to pay. So you can actually sign up for emails and then not use the Unibank service, which is sort of a, a, a productive use of it. Right. So, I mean, I think we just have to get to the heart of what Unibank can and can't do. But I think being able to pay online is not something we want to do. Do they get a with. transaction? It's very useful. Fifty cents. It's very useful to be able to pay online. Yeah, it's pretty. I don't pretty want cheap. To. No, we're not. Yeah, I, I, that I, seems kind of overkill. Well, and I, I did explain to the gentleman that that obviously is a policy. I certainly can't say we're not going to pay online anymore. And I explained to him that, frankly, we have a generation of people. He's. I understand what he's concerned about. I wouldn't want something to look like I owed money either. But frankly, we have different generations of people with different concerns, and younger people are more concerned with the facilitating of the payment and making it easy than, frankly, whether or not your neighbor looks up your tax yeah. bill. Okay. In this case, he said someone from out of town saw it who knew him. Um, but I, I, you know, but people do look at stuff. You know, people, people do. I think we need to have a link. So I, I, that would be that would be a, a great solution to the problem if we can just link to the whole system and our system to see who's paid and who hasn't. But well, thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to get that. I did put a post I out there trying really to. Really bad for the yes. finance department because yes, that Sturbridge Mass Community page, I never go on it. And then well. someone had said something, and so I went back and looked at the post, and I was just like. And, and I will tell you, yeah. it was the week between New Year's, uh, Christmas and New Year's, Barbara tried to reach people at Unibank and Munis. Obviously, her access to people was limited. She did spend, to her credit, Friday afternoon and the weekend trying to at least pull the site down so that, the, you know, and get a disclaimer up and, and do what she could do at least in the meantime. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not her fault. No, to appease the situation. But unfortunately, and I think I put in my post that really disparaging people in, in, in town staff is not the best way to get results. And I just asked, and also taking to Facebook. I said, if you have a problem, come to me first. Yeah, if you don't like don't. what I say, then take it to Facebook. But no, at least I, give I, a chance I, to resolve. You know, it's just the internet. You can't worry about yeah, it. It's, just, it's <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, um, but anyway, so anything else, Mary Lou? No, that's it. That was the excitement <laughs> of the day. I have nothing. Thank you. And Mary? Are we on new business? Uh, we are on new business, yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to need a little more time to digest. I've, thank you very much for asking for the free cash, and it's very useful having the history. But we also have a reserve fund of money as well, not just free cash, right? Well, the reserve fund comes from that 50000 or 80000 or 100000 yeah. comes from the free cash. We fund right, it. Right, but I mean, right. so, but, right, but so, am I correct that the seven, Million seven ninety five is free cash only, or the reserve fund money as well. Well, the reserve fund is a small amount. I know, but it's not included. I in don't this. know if she included that fifty or a hundred thousand in it or not. That I don't know. Okay, it's free cash. It would have it, been certified. It would have been certified not, that. Not, yeah, I think the reserve million. fund would be separate because that's money. In fact, so I would like to yeah. know what that has been over okay. the years. As that's well. down right now, um, and in fact, that's part of the town, one of the town meeting warrants is to transfer money into it from free cash. Right. I think another 50000 or whatever we have in the... In the I mean, area. years ago, we used to go from... When I was on the FinCom, I thought we went from reserve fund to free cash. We used to transfer money from the reserve fund into our free cash account because the reserve fund was viewed as more of the second deep savings and the free cash was the more accessible. So I feel like now we're doing it... I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying, we used to, in my opinion, I believe do the opposite. We used to have a reserve fund transfer transfer into free cash. Well, you might at the end of the year, if you had excess that you didn't use out of your reserve fund, you might have transferred back to free cash, possibly. Okay. Maybe that's what That may thinking. be, that may be. That may, but in this case, what we have now is about $7 million, and I think I gave you the breakdowns of the different, um, the different viewpoints on it. 
So DOR says three to five percent. We need to certainly review our FinCom policies. Um, but Moody's wants fifteen percent, and what GFOA wants, what I typically go by, is two months of operating budget, which is a sixth. Mm -hmm. So that you know, just to I, give you some that put you around seven or eight million, which is exactly probably going to request knowing what other comparable towns are doing yep. now, because yep. we've had a very good rating and we've had less than what we have in right now. Mm -hmm. And in fact, our rating's gone up over the years, even though we had less. So the idea of we have to be concerned about our rating doesn't jive with the history of where we've had less than this mm -hmm. and our rating still improved. And so anyway, so I, I would like to know what other towns. I, I, I can get you that. I can tell you other towns are probably not gonna be anywhere near as good. Other towns also do overrides. Um, I think what the, the, you have to look collectively. Um, right, but I want to know debt, if we're in example. the same ballpark. Right. Because what the, traditionally, we always gave something back. And this is relatively new in the last three years that we're giving nothing back. We've always given 250, 300, 350. And this is a departure from that prior practice. So I guess I would want to know if we're not even in the ballpark of other towns and their rating is still good and ours is really good i think we need to think about offsetting our tax rate with some of our free if, cash if money. i do get those comparables for you what i also have to show you is what their debt ratio is okay that's fine so whatever you need to do we're looking at borrowing six or seven million dollars in the next couple of years for the radio project mm -hmm. that increases our debt ratio which puts our bond rating at risk the offset to that is going to be a very high rate you know, free cash balance. So it's it's a juggling act of five or six different factors. It's a philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, I will say where I think DOR comes from with three to five percent in the city of Boston, three to five percent is you know millions and millions of dollars. So if they have a millions. roadway, billions. <laughs> so if they have a roadway collapse, three to five percent, they've got more than enough money to pay that. If we have a road collapse, our one mile of road to repave is the same as Boston's cost. And we have a much smaller pot to pay it out of. No, I don't want you to so, do comps of, just like no, when we I, go I, into I, contract I, negotiations with unions, we have comps that, and we base raises on that and all that. I want similar towns, because now we're at 12%. Mm -hmm. So we're going from seven, our mon you know, like seven was the upper end mm -hmm. of what our yep. monetary oh, policy so. used to be. Mm -hmm. And now we're at 12, almost double eight. Why aren't we at maybe well, 10? That's, but that's certified at 12, but we've spent five of that. So we're back down to, to eight. But well, even regardless, that's certified let's, from let's not year. go through the, yeah. because yeah, like, let's, right. you know, we're all just absorbing yeah, like, it. See. But I think what there's two, way I look at it is, is, is there's a short term issue that, maybe not short term, it's a, but if, if interest rates are gonna be where they're gonna be for the next few years, that will inform the amount of free cash that we're gonna wanna mm -hmm. use. And, and maybe, what, you know, you can talk about mm -hmm. the, the policies of that beyond it, but, but that should anyways. And we probably need more free mm -hmm. cash if we're staring down, you know, eight to 14% interest rates. Whereas once that settles back mm -hmm. down and the, Fed puts the printing presses back on, then you reevaluate that policy. Absolutely. But you don't, I don't think we want to get too more, I think we're still in a very strange period. And so I think we just kind of have to, and then I think that's kind of what Mary's really saying is that she wants to see what the different uh, I people do, do for yep. the people approaches are going. And also maybe I misread this, but I thought we, it says, after expending our free cash and capital last year, we had just over five million unappropriate. That is in the 12% range and is reasonable. Mm -hmm. So we are at 12%, even though we've spent everything. Right. Oh, no, oh I thought you said we weren't oh, no, at 12%. No, 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 we're still at 12%. We're still yeah. at 12%. And I'm, th I'm saying, yeah. maybe you want to consider being at 10%. Or yeah, at, well, that's the thing. But you know, you, would help me, too, which I, what I don't understand is, if you could find out how much per household we're talking about. We're talking about $350,000. It seems like a lot of money. Well, what if we gave that back? What does that like equal? It's like $50 or $75. Well, that's what I was curious. Is okay. it dollars or $100? Yeah, because uh, you, know. yeah, you got a, the, the yeah. impact. It's not a lot, yeah. but it's something. No, no, it's something. I just didn't care. I never knew what the I, household you know, impact it, it, Yeah, and I, I'll get that for you. And so much of this comes down to when we're looking at what our debt costs are going to be coming up. So we have a debt service line item in a budget, what we pay our bills with, right? Whatever you pay your credit card with in your household is your debt service, sort of. 
So we're going to have that line item is going to go up when we borrow for the radio project and any other major projects we have. That's a number I'm going to have to weather within the 2.5. So, you know, we have turn back money. Turn back money isn't because we're overtaxing. Turn back money is a result of someone doesn't get hired, fiscal prudence, you know, things come in a little less than we thought budgeting wise. Um, I am concerned because it's not like we budget extra money. So when that debt service line item goes up, we have to be very careful, which means that I don't want to have any extra interest if we can avoid it. And to Jamie's point on where interest is like all over the map right now, right. I'm looking to, uh, if, if we do anything, as opposed to giving it back in a, to the point of how much is it really going to matter per household, it's going to be a lot worse per household if I don't buy more out of that free cash, use it to actually buy capital, expend it. Mm -hmm as opposed to giving it back. Because if I give it back and then I have to borrow at 6% for what I could have bought outright, let's say a plow truck yeah. for a half million dollars. I don't want to borrow for that if I can use the half Not million with the interest rate. I, get it. I, I agree yeah. with that. We all agree with that, but, but to, by the, and I don't know that this will actually well on the numbers, but the balance of that is there are certain people in town that don't have that much money mm -hmm. and a certain amount of X, Y, Z goes a lot further for them yep. and that the, if the larger community has to ease some of that burden that also balances yep. into it so we don't know um let's let's have a more structured conversation it's a, this is a good starting point for it yep. all and, I know and when you do get the cons um if we can also have um which should be pretty easy because we have our or we have our um finance books over the years we've always had up until maybe again three years ago an article that um, transferred from free cash to offset the tax rate. Yep. I'd like to know what it has been for the like last 15 years and when we stopped doing it. Okay. Because I think from the time I was on the board, it started at 250 and we worked our way to 350. Okay. So I, I would, that would be useful as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was Mary Dowling, new business. Nope. No new business. No new business. I don't think we had any correspondence unless I missed it. Nope. I don't. I think we did. Nope, we didn't have any. Um, we have no minutes. They're coming. Uh, and then Citizens Forum, I don't think we have anybody here. Do I have a motion, motion to, to adjourn? adjourn? Do not interrupt the chair. <laughs> <laughs> second, do I have a second? That's going to be how <laughs> 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 the iron fist. <laughs>